here's what you actually need to know. First, let's talk some general tips, just some words of advice. First things first, hide that timer. If you're one who gets distracted easily, if you get stressed out easily, if you're one who has test anxiety, literally do yourself a favor and hide that timer. If you hide that timer, you're eliminating a distraction, you're eliminating the impulse to shift your focus from passage to timer to passage to timer, and you're actually giving yourself the chance and opportunity to focus in on the questions and passages right in front of you, ultimately leading you to a better SAT score. Let's talk the reading and writing section. <sighs> Lovely. Being a junior in high school this year, who is navigating through this SAT prep? Trust me when I tell you that it's actually not that hard. It really isn't. If you got the strategies down, you know the content, you're gonna be fine, I promise. Listen up people, start at question 15. Okay, let me tell you why. The first few questions in your English modules are something called your word and context questions, where basically College Board is gonna give you like four random vocabulary words yeah, they suck. Anyways, point here is you either know it or you don't. If you choose to start at question one and you don't know the definitions, you're gonna stress yourself out, you're gonna panic, you're gonna waste your time just because you don't know what refute and what concede mean. So what are you gonna do? Start at question 15. These are where you're gonna find all of your grammar questions, your writing questions, yada, yada, yada. They're easy breezy. If you know what you're doing, if you're like, yeah, uh, I need a refresher, check out this video where I tell you guys some of the grammar rules that you're gonna wanna know. If you're one who's like, yeah, I wanna be familiar with the SAT vocabulary and not walk in completely blank, then definitely make sure to go and check out my description and you'll find some resources that can help you. Tip number two for the reading and writing section is to think like an NPC. Hear me out on this one. The point here is instead of overthinking these passages like we overthink every single part of our life, right? We're gonna take these passages for what they are and we're gonna think through them logically and here's how you guys can do that. Okay, so if you're one who's like, you know what, reading comprehension and I, we are not friends. Words just go in one ear, out the other. If this is you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If this is you, listen up because right now I'm gonna show you guys how you can tackle any reading comprehension question thrown your way on the digital SAT exam. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna hide that timer. I don't even wanna see you and let's see what we're being asked to find, right? So the question here asks, which answer choice best describes the overall structure of the text? So we're only going to focus on the overall structure of the text, nothing else. And my biggest tip here is to actually read the sentences that come before the paragraph. And I'll tell you why. A lot of the time, College Board gives you background information that can help you understand the context of what you're reading in the paragraph. And so after reading just these two sentences, you'll know that the characters in the story are actually neighbors who are secretly exchanging letters to one another. All right, so let's break this down. And just so I don't butcher anyone's names, let's just refer to the characters as A, R, and C. All we know is that the letter was given to the sister and then the sister gave the letter to R right? Who's the receiver. And then we get a little look into the chaos on the actual delivery of the letter. And then the text ends with the receiver's feelings of receiving the letter. That sounds kind of weird. So reading answer choice A, it says it describes the delivery of a letter and then portrays a character's happiness at reading that letter. Yes. All we know in the text, again, is the delivery of the letter, the chaos of the delivery of the letter, and then the receiver's feelings towards that letter. That's it. Answer choice B says, it establishes that a character is desperate to receive a letter. It never talks about how this R character is, you know, so desperate to receive this letter. No, we are not given any information on that. So you can immediately, you know, cross this answer choice out here. Answer choice C is actually a great example of a trap answer. The first part of this answer choice says it presents a character's concerns about delivering a letter. You know, after reading this text one time through, you'll think, okay, you know, this wasn't an easy delivery, right? So you, you might immediately say, okay, answer choice C is the right answer, but where in the text does it actually talk about what was in the letter? Nowhere, right? You just know, again, the delivery, the chaos, and the feelings of receiving the letter. So you can mark out this answer choice. Answer choice D says it reveals the inspiration behind the character's letter. Guys, you don't even know what was in the letter. Better yet, <laughs> you know, the inspiration behind writing it. So answer choice D is not the right answer, making A the correct one. So really the reading and writing section is all about taking the passages for what they are. You're not inferencing, you're not, you know, using background knowledge to help you out. And you're just thinking through each passage 
logically, right? You gotta know your grammar rules, but those are really easy to learn. Other than that, it's really just about pacing yourself so you can actually have the time to think through what's being tossed your way. Now, if your problem is math, if you know where you're lacking, like of the four, you know, math topics that you're tested on, you know, okay, my problem is geometry and trigonometry. And on my last SAT, I got the question about the arc length wrong, right? So then you know, okay, right now I need to go and Google search. I need to ask my chat GPT how to, you know, find the arc length of a circle. But if your problem is, I don't know anything, I don't know where to start, what concepts do I even need to know? then I got you. For a limited time and a limited time only, if you follow me on Instagram and DM me the words, send me the list, then I will send you the list to the math topics that you're gonna wanna know. If you're one who's like, hey man, I just need the resources, I need the material, I need a place to start, then check out my description. I have linked for you guys a bunch of the resources that I have personally used to study. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye bye.